All right, Mike is hot. Mike's hot, as is the coffee. Cheers, friends. I've run out of my Death Wish coffee, so the channel's running on Dunkin' today. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Um, well, I've got one final haul video uh, for some time. I know I said that the last the last go round, but um, I was going to make this too. But I think I want to clear the deck and uh, get this all knocked out of the way, and then get on to some other kind of content. Um, I, I, I'm enjoying showing you, you know, the stuff I've gone over, gone for over the last year, and and uh, I know I like watching haul videos and and things like that, but um. But I think I want to start doing some more individual reviews, um, sampling, um, you know, stuff I'm looking forward to, um, stuff that has long been in my collection, some rare stuff. Um, so let's let's knock this out of the way and uh, hope that the sound stays with us uh, this time. Um, okay, uh, we're gonna do a little housekeeping and then we're just gonna just gonna barrel through this. Um, some of this is. Uh, some of these are backups. Some of this stuff you're very familiar with. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on every single thing. Oh, and I got uh, I got a package today from Bulgaria, of all places. And uh, it was a cross your fingers kind of a purchase, but uh, it came through and I could not be happier. Uh, okay, what am I sampling? I am, um, I've been sampling a Totally Beard Orange. And... It's been a mixed bag of things. Um, one or two kind of piqued my interest, but nothing, nothing crazy just yet. But today uh, is different. We have run into two that I am thoroughly enjoying. This one is Experimentum Crucis, and this one is curious. Very strange opening of um, of cumin apple and lychee um very interesting um i'm not totally sold on it yet but it's very interesting I'll, I'll say that now this one however is has really uh has really knocked me out and i've heard of this i've seen it around i've heard the talk and i'm glad that i finally got my nose on it this is a very unique and interesting leather um, opens up with aldehydes and, and like an Italian kind of a leather, uh, uh, lemon rather. This is very interesting. This, uh, it's a little early to say. I just, I just sprayed this on like an hour ago, but boy, that's starting to look like a full bottle. Um, yeah, Tom of Finland, uh, Antoine Lee. Uh, it shouldn't come as any surprise to me. I'm a big fan of his work. Um. Okay, scent of the day. Uh, this one rarely, if ever, gets talk, and um, and the and some of the reading that I've done on it, done on it when it did come out, it was widely panned as kind of middle of the road, uninspired, ungerlan like. Um, I, I completely disagree. This has uh, I've been sampling this on and off for the past year, um, and I've. Totally fallen in love with it. This is Cologne Du 68 by Guerlain. And um, this is fantastic. This is one of the better Guerlains that I've smelled. Um, I don't, I'm not overstating it either. I really like this. I, I, I think it comes in a few different variations. And I think it might even come in an EDP. I have to do some more research. But man, this just ticks all the boxes for me. I, I love this. Um, I can see ripping through this bottle and getting, and, and maybe going after a backup. Kind of cool how it has all the notes there right on the front. Whether it has 68 notes or not, I don't know. But it certainly does do a lot of different things. I mean, the, the opening is just a pinwheel of, of citruses. Um, lots of herbs and spices popping up. Um, a real dry uh, woody vanilla, dry vanilla, not sweet. Um, really very interesting. Really very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm totally stoked to have that in the collection. Um, the package I just got in today will be, I guess, included in these halls. Um, this house has been getting a little talk recently. I've 
I've been familiar with this house. I've seen it around. I just never pulled the trigger on it. Never, never seen any talk about it until recently. Ram Ramsey started talking about Omar Sharif, poor Om, and and the poor Femme. Um, hmm, the poor Femme looks pretty readily available. I, I most likely will go after that one of these days. The poor Om is another story that seems to be a ghost. Um, but going down the rabbit hole, this caught my eye, and I snapped it up as soon as I saw it. This is Conviction for Men by Omar Sharif. Um, this has been a really pleasant surprise. There's not a lot of information about it. Um, the only thing I know about it for sure is that it was released in 1999. Um, a few of the blogs have like the genre they think it sits in, like ambery, spicy, whatever. I, I think Perfumo even said listed synthetic as as a you know a way of describing it i don't think so at all i i just got it in a few hours ago and i sprayed it on my arm and i have been uh enjoying it so far um this is really nice and the bottle is just the coolest bottle very cool i'd like to know who who designed this one eh, wouldn't surprise me if it were one of the big ones um I couldn't be happier to have this Omar Sharif's conviction for men. Uh, I love, I love the super obscure, like yeah, Omar Sharif, poor Omar, um, poor femme is obscure enough. But this one, I was just like, what is this? I was like, that's gotta, that's gotta come home. So, uh, all the way from Bulgaria conviction. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's just dive right in. Like I said, this is a mix of different hauls, um, birthday presents, um, things I've gone after over the last few months. Um, so we're just going to tear through it. Um, the first one is a bottle from 1975. And this is Chanel for Men. And wow, I don't know what's taken me so long to get this fragrance and the next one in my collection because it is beautiful. It is a beautiful masculine, uh, just a timeless, beautiful masculine. Um, really wonderful. It, it, I mean, it's, pure, it's poor Monsieur, as I understand it. I think poor Monsieur was poor Monsieur up until the late sixties, early seventies. And then they, for some reason, named it Chanel for men and then went back to poor Monsieur which is this one. Now, I got this one from Manoj, and I don't know if this is an 80s or a 90s bottle, but it is an older bottle, and it is fantastic. Yeah, again, I don't know, I don't know what's taken me so long to get this in the collection, but uh, I'm very happy to have it. Um, I'm going to have to do a side-by-side -side of these two uh, down the road. Um, another oh. Chanel. Um, as you know, I always, I always make the mistake of skipping over EDTs, um, and go for the parfums or the EDPs or whatever, the x -traits. Um, and, uh, I have the 19 in the parfum, but I was lucky enough to get the EDT. And this is an older, I, I want to say this is 80s, but I'm not quite sure. Um. I'll have to do a little research. This will probably get its own review. Maybe a maybe a side by side with the parfum. Um, I I don't know why I continue to skip over the EDTs. Um, I've circled back on a lot of the EDTs from from Chanel that I've wanted and have been have been happy uh, each time, and this is no exception. Nineteen eau de toilette. Okay, uh, we have two here. That I got from a friend in the community. Um, and this is Chaldi and Cocktail. And these are from Jean Patou. And these were released in 1927 and 1930. Um, I want to say Henri Almarez is the perfumer for one of them. Uh, these were uh originally bottled by a guy named uh 
I can't think of his first name, but his last name is Sue. Um, and then these were revamped and repackaged by, speaking of Pierre de Nantes, um, they were done, uh, done by him as just a, just an amazing duo here. And I hear Colony is also in this group and worth looking after. And I, I most likely will. These are beautiful. I'm not a big white floral fan, but, um, but these are done really nice. Lush florals, amber, spicy, thick and resinous. Um, they're using hyacinth, which I'm a fan of hyacinth. Um, what's hyacinth in? Hyacinth is in um, is in my Guerlain. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, can I think of it? The one Bobby O likes. Um, it'll come to me in a minute. But uh, these are really nice. These are, they're, they seem like, they seem like a, a sister duo. Um, these patus, uh, the femmes, uh, I'm going to need to look further into that collection because uh, I hear Ma Griff. Is Ma Griff Jean Patu? Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, those two are making me want to go after others. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of Antoine Lee earlier, um, he's really one of my favorite perfumers and I have the, speaking of Eldo as well. Um, the only Eldo I have in my collection is, uh, Rianne intense incense. And, um, I really, I really like that fragrance. And then I sampled this one and I've been sampling this one on and off for the past year or so. And I finally added it to collection and this is Rianne. This is another case of me skipping over the original or the EDT, and this is not an EDT, but um, going after the what I would think is a darker fragrance. But um, I'm glad I circled back and got this one because I think I may be ready to say that this is better. I think this is better than the Rianne Intense Incense. Um, this is a brilliant fragrance. Uh, this is going to get a lot of wear in the winter. Um, yeah, Antoine Lee, just... Uh, I've got a lot of his work, and uh, and uh, it's you know he always I guess he just does stuff that that I get you know um, okay uh, I'm a fan of Lalique's and this one has long been on my list um, it's kind of an elusive one I don't know if it's discontinued I don't think it is but for some reason this one is uh, is kind of hard to get a hold of it does pop up once in a while at discounters and when it did. I got it, got it in, and uh, my nephew loved it, and he had just graduated, so I, I told him to keep the bottle as kind of a, a little graduation present, um, so I had to go back out and snap up another bottle. Luckily, it was still there. This is Ombre Noir by Lalique. Um, really very nice. Worth the wait. Worth the wait for sure. Lalique. I know it's said all the time, but it bears saying again, Lali does pound for pound some of the best fragrances for the price. Um, okay, here's another one that's long been on my list. Um, I'm a big fan of M7, and I have the original version. Um, and I've always been curious about this one, and I was not let down. I kind of I kind of use the M7 sparingly and I thought, well, let me get something that's in, in the same neighborhood so that I can kind of still get that DNA as a wear. And this is M7, Oud Absolute. And this is a this is a nice pickup. This is a really good fragrance. Um although the only thing I'm disappointed about is the packaging. Um it's another example of a house that just basically says we don't care. Um we don't care about bringing you quality, uh, unique, um, artistic packaging or, you know, cause it, it the juice is, is, is paramount of course, but, but I think the packaging and the bottling, uh, is a part of the whole artistic experience. And when houses just give up and go uniform like Guerlain or YSL or some of the other houses that I think it's, I think they're really disrespecting the, the clientele and the, the lovers of their fragrances because um you know it, it really the visual aspect 
is just as just as important as the tactile uh, aspect as is the olfactory uh, uh, experience. Um, I don't know why that's been lost on, you know, um, perfume houses, but bigger dollars and less creativity. I don't understand how that makes sense to anybody. But, um, okay, so I used to wear the original here in high school and just after high school, um, Fahrenheit. Now, I don't have an original bottle in my collection right now. Um, I have an original cologne. I have uh, the Le Parfum. And then I have another one coming up here. But this one has been at the top of my list uh, for a very long time. And I finally added it to the collection. And this is uh, Fahrenheit Absolute. This is exactly what I thought it would be. This has quickly risen in the ranks of my favorites of all time. I've only had it for a couple of weeks now, maybe a month. And I can't get enough of it. It's it's just a killer. It's an absolute killer. Um, this is going to get a lot of wear in the winter. Um, that's from the line. But I, don't, I don't think that's a stretch to say. Um, yeah, maybe the best in the line. Um, okay, let's see. What's next? Okay. Speaking of unique packaging, uh, this, this is a house that, that kind of does that which is pleasant and refreshing. This is Lux Patchouli by Comme de Garçon. It's kind of a cool box. It kind of opens like, like a seashell kind of a deal. And the bottle sits down inside. Um, paint's coming off this one, though. But that's okay. It's a cool little bottle. Reminds me of, uh, reminds me of those little um, Amouage Atars. That's what it reminds me of. And this is this is a really nice patchouli. It's a thick, chocolatey resinous. Just comes out of the bottle swinging. Um, doesn't make any apologies. Um, it's not not nuanced, um, but it is very nice. Um, I'm happy to add that to collection. Um, I have another Comte de Garçon, the the two man. You know, and that's nice, but it's it's kind of uh, redundant to some other DNA in my collection. Um, I want to start checking out some of the other Comme de Garçons, like Avignon and some of those other ones. Um, okay. Uh, piggybacking off that last one, um, I was lucky enough to get a, another bottle of Fahrenheit. And this is the Cologne version. And this is a pleasant surprise. I didn't know what to expect with this. I, I wasn't sure that I would I would really enjoy it, but this is nice. This is green. Green green. Like like freshly broken juicy stems green. And uh very cologne like this is gonna get some wear this summer for sure. This is really nice. I'm I'm happy to add that to the collection. Um there's a few other flankers out there that I that I'm interested in, but Man, they're hard to find, and and when you do find them, you know they're they're charging, you know they're charging organs, and I don't have a lot to spare. Um, okay, this next one, as per the tag, is a two thousand and eight bottle. I am a huge fan of Dior Intense. I have a two thousand and fourteen bottle, and I love it. It is one of my favorites in my collection. Um, I didn't know that I would enjoy the regular Dior Ohm, but turns out that I do. This is Silver Stem Dior Ohm, and, um, I think they're different. Not different, you know what I mean. I, I think they're two separate colognes, uh, two separate fragrances. They're not, uh, you know, I don't think they're so close. I do the same things, and they have the same, you know, vibe, but, um, this one is a lot space, like has a lot more space and it's a lot more air, you know. The other one is a little more dense and, and kind of a, you know, a thicker, closer wear. Um, this is a pleasant surprise. I am not disappointed. I am actually even more in love with this DNA. I wouldn't, li I wouldn't mind seeing what the cologne's about. I hear good things about the citruses and that. So uh, I, have to, I have to check that out soon. Um, okay, we're doing pretty good on time. 
Um, okay. I am a fan of this house. And I'm a fan of the the first Royal X. And now I have the Triple X Cancel Cannoli. Um, here, uh, uh, Claude Durr just killed it with this one. Really killed it. Look at that. I kind of dig that. A 69. Always, always nice little touches on, on George's packaging. Um, attention to detail is always... Always top notch. Um, this is a great fragrance. The opening in here is probably probably one of the best openings I've smelled in a fragrance in some time. Uh, the cardamom and the lavender. It's um, it's not it's not a million miles away from X, but it's um, it's dialed up. It's um, it's it's a little more in your face. Um, I've heard challenging, and I could see it being challenging, maybe if you don't have a lot of experience, but um, for me, this is just beautiful. Um, it, it, the musk in the dry down it gets a little, has a little bit of a growl to it, and you know, I can see it being perceived as a little dirty, but um, but for me, I, I think it's beautiful. I think this is a, I think this is a win. I'm really looking forward to uh, Coco Loco when that comes out. I, I just uh, I just picked up a bottle of that. Hopefully that'll be in soon. Um, okay, long on my list. Um, this house is is a, a curious house. I've tried some of the older stuff, and this one is always this one has always looked like it would be my jam, and it is. This is Eau de Beau by L'Occitane. Um, really a good fragrance. Um, I will have to give this an individual review, and I'd like to look at some of the other ones, the uh, the Cade and and uh, a few of the other ones. It's really nice. This is this is perfect. This is my kind of fragrance. Um, all right, let's. Uh, and if anybody has any information, like I think this is the older packaging, but if uh, anybody has any information about the newer Loxetanes, if they're worth going after. Drop it in the comments because um, I'm not opposed to going after newer stuff if um, if I know that they take care of the reforms. Um, okay, this is uh, this was a birthday present to myself, and this is Andy Towers Sundowner, and this is the third Andy Tower in my collection, unlikely the last. Um, I have Okuru to Desert, and I have. Um, uh, Lonesome, uh, Lone Star Memories, and uh, this is as soon as I put my nose on it in the uh, the fragrance shop, I was like, "Yep, uh, it's coming home." It's a beautiful, man. It's so beautiful. Andy Tower just just does it, man. He just does it right. Um, someday, somehow, some way, somewhere, I'd like to I'd like to get my hands on uh, Lonesome Rider, but. Uh, that is a ghost, and not easy to come by. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. One of these days. Um, okay. Uh, and for my birthday, I went to a place that had a lot of really nice um, uh, shave products. I'm getting into aftershaves and beard bombs and beard oils and stuff like that. So I picked up a few things when I was there. And... Um, this one I got, it's uh, Captain's Choice, and this is a sandalwood beard bomb, or beard oil. Beard oil, yeah. This is really nice. It's uh, it's not sweet or anything, it's just a kind of a peppery, dry sandalwood, and it's uh, really nice. Really very nice. Um, what else? Uh, now, I, I got turned on to this brand believe it or not, by my dad, who's not a fraghead at all. He just, he has like two or three, you know, Old Spice, the usual suspects. But he's always been a big fan of the one, the, the one from this house called Royal Musk. This one is Royal Bay Rum. Uh, for his birthday, I got him another bottle of the Royal Musk, and I took the one he had and put it in my collection because it's a really nice musk. Um... And then I went down the rabbit hole, and this company, Royal Limes, 
I believe the name of the house is Royal Limes, and they're out of Bermuda. I kind of dig this old school packaging. Um, and there's a ton of flankers. Um, the Royal Bay Rum, there's Royal Spices, Royal Limes, Royal Mandarin, uh, Royal Vetiver. And then there's there's this one, which I've always been curious about. It's Royal Vetiver Noir. Now, and look at these bottles. They're, they're really very cool. Um, however, unfortunately, when I went to spray this in the shop, um, you know, because it's a tester, um, it didn't have anything in it. So I was like, ah, oh, and they didn't have another one to put out. So um, it does have a little bit of a little drop in there. And uh, sales assistant let me take it with me for, yeah, the bottle's cool. And it's kind of a nice reference to, uh, you know, remind myself to uh, to get this one. So, and I've seen it on eBay for relatively cheap. Um, so it's a, uh, it's an interesting little house. If you, uh, if you run into it, don't pass it up. These are really nice, like cologne aftershave, you know, kind of after the shower kind of stuff. Doesn't last a whole long time, but, uh, really nice stuff. Uh, when you get out of the shower worth, worth a go for the price, in my opinion. Um, one final shave product, um, in one of my, one of my last hauls, uh, Anoush was kind enough to put this in. And this is the shave from uh, Biblios. Um, I don't have this fragrance. And so I'm waiting to scoop this fragrance up before I try this. Um, but it's kind of cool. I love that there are these old vintage shave foams. Uh, so that'll be a nice little addition to the collection. I'll report back on that fragrance when I get it. Um, okay, we're down to the end pretty much. Just a couple of... Uh, couple of backups i got i just got this for a song and a dance so i threw it in throw it in my cart it's a modern bizarro porum i love the dna i have several different iterations of it ranging back to the to the early 80s through the 90s the 2000s and uh i even have the azaro uh porum intense from 92 uh i have the later uh intense as well and then i just bought that modern I just love it. I love the anise. I love the DNA. I mean, this one doesn't have, this one doesn't have some of those materials that, that the older version does, but it's still pretty good, I think. Um, and another backup that I got for a very good price, I kind of couldn't pass it up because I really do like this fragrance in the winter. This is Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Home with the built-in sprayer. I love this fragrance. It's, uh, yeah, it's a big boy fragrance. Um, okay, two more, and then we're out of here. Um, this house is, has uh, always been on my radar. Um, there are a few that are very interesting, and uh, and our friend Ramsey um, piqued my interest with this one, and um, I finally picked up uh, Idole de Le Bon. This is the EDT, which is incredibly hard to find. And not cheap, not cheap, but I'm very grateful to, to have this in the collection. Um, and speaking of packaging, this company does packaging uh, better than a lot I've seen um, before or since. This is just a wonderful bottle. Um, I don't know if this is some kind of a mask. I don't, can't remember what I read about these, these caps. There's some kind of a mask like a kind of a tribal mask or something. I don't know. But this is an unbelievable fragrance. I could not be happier to add this to the collection. Um, I'm uh, curious about the EDP. Um, if it's anywhere near as good as this one, uh, I might have to go after that. Um, I'm interested in the pod as well. That looks interesting. Um, if there's any other, any other from... Uh, from this house that you can recommend drop it in the comments i'm interested um okay last but not least certainly not least and with the theme of packaging here um this house has been a favorite of mine for some time and uh, i've always been i've always been happy with with arisha's packaging um but uh with this latest collection of uh 
the history of Ood collection. He's gone like to the moon with with the packaging. To the moon. I don't want to rip this box. I've already ripped it on one side. Um yeah, he's really gone above and beyond. I want to make sure that I show this. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Look at the detail. I mean, it's a great lacquered box. It um, kind of opens up. It's like a nice felt on the back. Um, really, really impressive. Um, it's an awesome touch with the... Uh, the information on the inside of the um the inside of the uh, the lid there really very cool and the bottle this bottle may be one of the best bottles i've seen in a very very long time um this is a stunner i mean just look at that look at the cap the bottle is Unbelievable. I mean, you can see stamped the logo into the bottom of the cat at uh, the bottom of the bottle. The attention to detail is is uh, is on another level. He really took it to took it to new heights. Um, you know, and then you you want to ask the question with no disrespect, but did the packaging um, get some of that some of the budget from the materials? And that's a, yeah, this is great. This is like, seems like some kind of stone or flint or something. It's really very interesting. Um, even the, even the atomizer has, I don't know how well you can see that, but the atomizer has the logo on top of it. He really, the attention to detail here is, is wonderful. And to answer that question of whether the, uh, the packaging got, got some of the budget from the materials, um, you know, thus, thus compromising the, the quality of the materials, I'd have to say no. This Chinese oud is a stunner. It's, um, it's, I've been blown away. I've been blown away. I'm interested to sample the rest of the line. I'm interested in the Atars now. Um, this has really, um, has really impressed me. Um, and this is a commitment. I mean, just one or two sprays and you're in it to win it until uh, midday tomorrow, no doubt. Um, it's such a long development. Um, oh, man, it's so good. The Chinese Oud, I don't know how the other ones are, but this Chinese Oud is, is, a, is a killer. Um, so, yeah, a reach the door. Bring it up the rear. Um, okay, my friends, I guess that's, uh, that's all she wrote for the, uh, for the halls. The deck is clear. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna get off into some some more individual stuff and uh, and um, start looking at some of my you know some of my obscure unheard of stuff some of my new stuff um, do some comparison videos maybe a weekly rotation um, as usual if there's anything you can teach me about anything you've seen here um, any directions you can shoot me off into suggestions. Uh, I really look forward. I mean, it's a, a large part of why I do these videos is for the interaction in the, in the comments. So, um, okay. Y'all have a great night. Stay grateful. Peace.